Oradell is the southernmost town in the Pascac Valley. But it wasn't always Oradell. In fact, there was a time when it had a bit of an identity crisis. Let's meet Frank Veerling, Oradell historian, and hear more about this interesting situation in this, our Meet Your Historian segment. Frank, I want to thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Um, we're standing here in a very interesting place that we'll get to talk about in a, a few minutes. But first, I wanted to just ask you a couple of simple questions. Um, you are the Oradell Borough Historian. Correct. Right? How long have you lived in this area? All my life, 80 some years. In uh, which towns? In Oradell. You've been in Oradell the whole time? I'm a native of Oradell. Okay. How did you get to be the historian? I guess just because I was here a long time, and Mayor Carolyn Haig appointed me in uh, 1989 to replace uh, Floyd Winters, who had been the historian. So you've been doing it for about 16 years or so at this point. Now, Oradell is very serious about history, apparently, because not only do they have you as a borough historian, but they have George Carter as a borough archivist, I think his title is. What, how do you two kind of split up the history job? Well, I, I do historical research, and what I put together, or we collect from other people pictures or documents, he catalogs them and files them. Tell me a little bit about where we are today. Well, where we are, we're on the uh, patio of the Atwood House, commonly called the Blauvelt House. Blauvelt was the fourth owner of this house. Uh, Atwood built it in 1896-97. He came to Oradell in 1895. Now, this is Charles Atwood? No, this is uh, Kimball Chase Atwood. Kimball Chase Atwood. Kimball Chase Atwood. Okay. Um, who was Kimball Chase Atwood? Kimball Chase Atwood was a native of Buckfield, Maine, came to New York City at age 19, worked for a dried goods company, then an insurance company, and then founded his own insurance company called Preferred Accident Insurance Company of New York. He also went down to Florida and developed the largest grapefruit grove in the world and introduced grapefruit across the United States. So he was a versatile uh, businessman and he made a lot of money. I, I guess the insurance business that he created was a little bit unique. Yes, it was unique. It was new. And as I understand it, he's the one that invented, if you lose an eye, you get a certain amount. You lose a hand, you get something, which was a new departure in insurance. What made him come out to, here to New Jersey? To, uh, was it Oradell at that time when he came here? No, it was actually Delford when he came here, which was a combination of Oradell and New Milford, and they uh, seceded from Midland Township <laughs> and formed the community of Delford, which was a combination of the two names. And then at what point did that uh, end up being Oradell? Well, the, the Oradell section of the, combi com uh, com of the combined me, towns, of the combined towns <laughs> uh, grew in population more, and nobody liked the name Delford. Even the New Milford people didn't like it. So in 1920, there were enough people in Oradell to have an election, and they voted Oradell as the name, okay. which didn't sit well with the New Milford part. But winners and losers. Winners and losers. So when did, did uh, uh, Kimball Atwood come here and build this house? Well, he came to Oradell in 1895. And there was a house down the hill from here, uh, the Van Wagner homestead, which they lived in for a little bit while they built this house in 1896-97. Right. And he loved horses, so he had a big barn and raised horses. They were trotting horses, and he used to, as an amateur driver, he used to race them. And he won many races. This is a very large house. Was it uh, typical for the houses going up in this area? No, this was very unusual, and in the newspapers it points out as one of the grandest houses in Bergen County. Now, the property has more than this one building, even today, and at that time there was more. What was the whole property like? Well, the whole property was over 100 acres. Uh, it went all the way back to Forest Avenue, and uh, there were several there was a large barn, just about as big as this house is, 
and the original barn that was built, which we'll see, uh, was the carriage house, and it was cost five thousand dollars to build by a local <laughs> lumberyard builders, Cooper and Demarest. Five thousand dollars, and today, who knows what something like that would cost, right? <laughs> At least a million. I At least think. a million. But do we know anything about what the cost to build this house was? Uh, yes, I think there was something about $110,000, including the furnishings. Which was a lot of money in those days. Yes, there was a very lot. So what else was on the property besides this and, and the carriage house? There was, was another barn. There, there, were, there was another house, which was either for servants or guests. Uh, there was an office building, uh, or a cottage they called it. There was greenhouses. I don't know whether Atwood put the greenhouses in or Blauvelt. But there are extensive gardens. Looking at this structure that's behind us, what, what are some of the interesting things about it? I mean, are there any architectural things that are unique or? Well, it's, it's unique in that it's a, called shingle architecture. And uh, I, I just think for the age that it was built in the locale in Ber Little Bergen County, that it was quite a grand house. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now the carriage house, uh, is still in use, but not as a carriage house. And tell me a little bit about that. Well, the carriage house was uh, subdivided from the property. Uh, the property uh, got a tax exemption as a museum, but finally they lost that. So they had to split the property, and it's now the Hiram Blauvelt Art Museum. Hiram was the, technically the fifth owner. He inherited it from his family family and it was given to a Demarest Foundation. And that's an operating museum today with uh, what type of art? It it's, uh, specializes in natural paintings, animals primarily. And not only paintings, sculpture? Sculpture yeah. or any, any of the disciplines in art. What other uh, sites of this you know, type of interest or this level of interest are there in Oradell? Well, this, this house is uh, situated on the site of uh, Lafayette's encampment back in uh, 1780. George Washington came here to visit them. Uh, Light Horse Harry Lee was here. Uh, Washington and uh, Lafayette are supposed to have eaten lunch on, under an oak tree back on Forest Avenue directly behind this house. So like a lot of the uh, areas, uh, the towns around here, this goes back to the Revolutionary War period. It uh, does. We have history. Uh, at that time, this was called Kindercomac, as was Emerson. And uh, just, just when it became Oradell uh, is lost in history. Okay. Are there any other very old structures still in existence in Oradell that are, that are still around? There are only a few of the old houses. Uh, one of them is Lofell's house on Grant Avenue, and there's another old house on Brookside Avenue, the Traphagen uh, accountants use that. And these go back to what, the 1800s? They go back to 1800s, and maybe late, late 1700s on one of them. Now I recently learned uh, that the, the Hackensack water uh, facility that I thought was in New Milford actually is in Oradell. It's, it's in, it co was called New Milford because originally that section of Oradell was, the Delford. was part of the Delford, okay. New Milford. And uh, that, of course, the first pumping station came there in 1882. And uh, it was operating up to about 12 years ago when it was turned over to the, the county for public use when they built the plant that's across in Harlem, across the reservoir. And there's a bit of a controversy going on there at the moment, I believe, in terms of what, that, what will actually be done with it. There is, but it's pretty much settled at this moment that the county proposes a park and to stabilize the buildings. But the buildings won't be open to the public. They will, will not be open to the That's public. That's what they say at the moment. But I know that there's a group, the, the uh, Conservancy, that is working on an alternate plan, I guess, to make it more of a museum. They've, they've been on that. Uh, with that proposal for many years now. 
but at least it's saved. The buildings theoretically are saved at right. the moment. Well, you can, if it's there, you can always decide right. later on to open it up. Right. So, okay. as you say, the first thing is preserve it. That was the major. Okay. Um, I think we will take a, a walk down and see a little bit of the uh, carriage house, which is now the museum, um, to round things out. This barn was uh, Kimball Atwood's carriage house. Uh, has, it's got beautiful stables inside and uh, cost $5,000 according to the newspapers of the day to build. And right now it's uh, filled with artworks and it's used as an art museum and called the Hiram Blauvelt Museum of Art. The uh, horse stalls are still in place in the building and they're used as little galleries for the artworks. Why don't we go in and look? Well, these, of course, were two horse stalls. The partition has been taken out to make a little extra gallery room. And here we have two of the original doors to the stall still in place. And this is Jim Bellis's office. Jim Bellis is the head of the present foundation. You know, if you just look at any of the little details around and think of that as a barn, Thank you.